te fata lo fa tumolo fa lo lo fa fong ang nga ale tinu ni tayao ole proclame fa tu la ngina ne matal tan no i misui mane american institute of medical research in ile la mua i am onisio ola to ne ifto ma am ya on university ola tal tan no tu tu la nga ola to um fa nga so long wa on nga ya wa oina e o mele termine o lenga lu do to no scientist uh, Talofa, good morning, Kiora, my friend. Uh, welcome to Samuel Capital Radio. Talofa, thank Hello, you for ma. having us. <laughs> thank you. Right, different from what you normally, you say that you're a student or you sit behind a microscope and look at things at the American Institute of Medical Research, is that right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, a lot more lab, <laughs> lab bench workers. <clears throat> Yeah. Perhaps if I get you to introduce yourself, sir, and uh, your name would be better, and then just talk about what you're doing currently at the institute. Yeah, sure. Um, well, Tlofa, Afumasaga, and Tlofa, um, all listeners. So my name is Yasmin, and I'm a PhD student at the Maligan Institute, which means I'm still studying. So I work on a project um, which revolves around a therapy called CAR T cell therapy which is basically a new way of um, treating blood cancers mm -hmm. where we utilize the body's immune system and teach the immune system to be able to fight cancer from within rather than using a drug. And I've been working on this project for um, just over three years now. So I'm coming to the end of the stage of study, um, which is exciting but daunting. <laughs> and yeah, it's been it's been really a great three years. I spend a lot of time in the lab and then the rest of my time kind of analyzing data and writing up my experiments and kind of thinking about where, where the project could go next. Right. My friend. Introduce yourself, please. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm Tama Tekawa, so um, I'm part of the hook women's therapy team uh, at Malaga. Okay. Uh, so it's the best way to describe what I do there uh, as a research officer is um, I'm like the, the hookworm dealer. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I kind of I, uh, I grow the hookworms and um, give them to uh, people in our team to use in the trials. Um, that, and they use them to treat autoimmune diseases or to see if they can. Um, so yeah, I, I, a lot of my work is just kind of production based, uh, evolved around mm. uh, getting the, the larvae for, for that. So I will uh, bring in the story I discussed with Graham when we talk about hookworm. Yeah. Because um, in the old days, before you leave Samoa, you get tested. If you have hookworm, then they give you medication to kill it. Mm. And then now you guys are saying, I think it's got some value in our bodies. <laughs> so, we, yeah. so I said to Gremlin, I left all those things back home. I should have bought them. <laughs> 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 I, was, I was healthy by then, they took it off me, and now things happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's good. Let, let me talk to, about what your roles are. Tato Maro Momor Tamaita Ilili to Tam Tam, or Yasmin Nori, or a PhD. Student, or I or Lofa Wolana, I own a name more than a fight long earlier, or I for a PhD. Yeah, my long Louis, the Viangalia Satan, no more for the CAR T cell. Uh, luckily, we did the program on CAR T cell, so I can talk about it quite uh, easily. Or a material for Satan, no Procolam Momo, or the CAR T cell, or the Lefa Yemo Tong Fitin, like Ton or the Toto, a Pio Yipo Calam Talboy. Perhaps, um, so I want to find out your journey in school or education. Perhaps we'll start with you as well and talk about where you went to college and your journey. And at what point in your uh, school life did you say, I want to be a scientist? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm interested in. <laughs> um, it's a good question. I, through school, was one of those people that I enjoyed a, a lot of different things and I was never clear on which one I actually wanted to follow. Mm. And I remember speaking to our careers advisor and he was great but he kind of 
I think their job is to like put you on a certain track and for me he told me that he thought I should do medicine which I kind of just got in my head oh, I'll do med I'll do med and then it wasn't until I was just leaving school that I kind of had a brainwave and I was like I don't want to be a doctor <laughs> and so I was like oh god I need to like rethink about what I actually right. do want to do and I thought about what I'm interested in and I loved biology and I loved English and I loved um kind of Qu- qu- like ans- asking questions and researching answers to them, whether that was in uh, the context of books or science, which probably seemed quite different. But um, yeah, and then I went to um, Vic and I decided to do biomed because I just mm. knew that I loved research um, and biology. And then I also stuck with English as well and did an English degree. And then I think it was near the end of my bachelor's where I thought I'd just keep pursuing research but it was never like a clear a hundred percent I want to be a scientist it was more just at every kind of decision making step along my career journey I kind of thought to myself what am I enjoying most out of everything I'm doing Mm. at the moment and I just because of the way it goes I had to kind of keep narrowing it down but I was Mm. saying earlier that I think it's just partly luck that I ended up loving science because I think it's really hard at the end of school to Mm. choose, make a decision on your career kind of for Mm. the foreseeable future. So I think, yeah, rather than thinking about the job, you'll get from it just like what you're enjoying Mm. at the time. And for me, that was research and biology, but Mm. it could be anything really. (laughs) So you're loving it. I'm loving it, yeah, 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 (laughs) which is lucky because it's been 10 years. Usually usually in families, uh, especially where you have a doctor, the the dad or mum will be a doctor and then the kids will tend to follow the path of career path. Any of your family in this sort of area, the science no, side? No, I'm the only scientist, oh. which, yeah, yeah, it was quite, oh, very good. it was quite left field. I think, honestly, I think I had um, some really amazing science teachers early mm. on and that kind of sparked an interest mm. in me, whereas science, unfortunately, I think it's like so much to do with how well it's taught and how much mm. kind of correlates with how much you're enjoying mm. it, so... Yeah, I think I was lucky. That I had so, how did you get into the American Institute of Medical Research? Um, so, I. Did they find you or did you find them? I found them, mm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was a nobody. <laughs> um, so, I did. So, in undergrad in biomed, I was doing genetics, which I loved. And then I went to Dunedin and did a um, master's down there in, in medical genetics. So, I was doing cancer genetics. And I really enjoyed that, but. Um, and I knew I wanted to stick with cancer, but the kind of genetics element of it, I was willing to kind of move away from if I had to. And I knew I wanted to do a PhD. And I think it started, I heard about the CAR T-cell trial through media because mm-hmm. it was just kind of kicking yes. off the ground. And my supervisor in Dunedin is connected to the Mulligan Institute. Oh, right. So he kind of said to me, you should go for it. If, you're, if that's a project you're interested in, you should kind of try to pursue that. Mm. So I got in touch with Graham and then I got in touch with Rob and met up with them and spoke to them about the project. And it was just kind of the stars aligned with timing and when I was finishing mm. my master's and when they were looking for a PhD student. And I kind of knew from speaking to them how cool the project was and I was really excited. Mm. Well, those, both those gentlemen have been here before. Yeah. So I'm really following them. <laughs> yeah. And they're, they're both really enthusiastic, which, yeah, yeah it was really encouraging. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah, I was so lucky, I think, to get a, mm. get a shot mm. at the project. And at the yeah, very good. Mm. It's a good story. Thank you for that. Ole, vai nga leto tfalong ulongo mai mulfa fo nga nga leto nu. Eisi te mi o na atoa tu leo tanuanga. Ale o tu atuni se vai nga. Ole fisili pe fa fo la le te mi o so fo nga ale awa o nga. Ale awa o ina. Nang nai loa iya o le nga lue nga le fi yai. Ya le la natalia yesmen. Il est temi à on a fait fier mita au pour ça ça ici et on est ça ça ou il y a le lot fait va en a il est au le biology ou le english et à mal pas au mec on peut va en a il est na na du lena et na lu le lo yo ta ko file genetics ma fait ici so en a fait on a phd à le terminer le fait na rang le american institute na ta ou ya il fait ya on le lo atono et ça ça ou fa ou lena so so en a 
Your Lela Wea Ili Terminator no Le Malekan Ishul Medical Research. Thank you for that uh, lovely story. Um, come to you now, my Tama. So tell us a bit of uh, your school life and how did you get up here? <laughs> Uh, so, well, first of all, I, I'm from the Hutt Valley, so yes. I'm from Stokes Valley. Um, uh, local, went, local. Yeah, local. <laughs> so, um, I went to St. Bernard's in the Hutt. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I didn't, uh, did pretty average, I guess, in mm. uh, biology and sciences in school. Um, yeah, I didn't particularly enjoy school. Um, no. And uh, th- throughout the NCA, uh, levels, I, I just kind of wanted to leave and get over and done with. <laughs> but um, so, in my second year of school, though, I I had a really good teacher. So, um, and I loved. I knew I loved detail, and so that's when they were teaching all the cell processes and, mm. um, at that stage. So that was in the back of my mind. But I remember leaving year thirteen. I just had no clue what I wanted to do. So I decided to take a just a year of work. Um, Mm. where I was just doing gardening at uh, general hand, um, cutting wood and building for that time. And then I was like, this isn't really for me. So, <laughs> But it's good life experience. Right? Yeah, yeah. It was, it was good to kind of get out um, and figure mm. out, you know, what was for me. So I decided um, I'm going to give biology a go, it was, uh, cell mm. science. So um, I enrolled and I, because I, I, I failed chemistry and, uh, school, so I had to do like a prerequisite course yes. to get in. Uh, so that was the first paper I did that summer, um, which was a good lead up to it because I'd been out of study for a year, so yeah. it was mm. good to get <laughs> to get the, the brain thinking again. So um, yeah, after that, um, first year in uni, I think the rest is kind of history. I really just loved mm. the cell biology in the first year. Second year, I loved it even more. Just got more and more specific. Mm. Um, and I was like, this is this is for me. The detail of just what everything is going on just really hooked me in. So, mm. um, yeah, that's where I kind of was at for study. Um, mm. So, yeah. How did you find Milliken? Uh So, after study, um, I didn't want to study anymore. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I wasn't, I didn't want to do my <laughs> master's or anything. Uh, I, I thought... You know, if I want to do my, my master's, I can always revisit later. So yeah. I decided to do um, uh, work again. So I worked for a short quality in Seaview. So they're mm. just a lab out there. So I worked there for a year and six months. Um, and then, yeah, I was looking uh, in that time. I was just keeping updated on the job market, you know, just seeing mm. uh, what, what I found interesting. And a job popped up at Melligan. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't get it, actually, <laughs> but uh, I asked them to keep my CV right. circulating yes. in Milligan, yeah. and I was fortunate enough that um, the opportunity came and they Very good. they contacted me again and said, hey, there's actually another job, mm. and I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, um, I'll come in and see what that's like, so... Mm. Yeah. yeah, you'll probably be given a nudge nudge to go and do some more studies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, and now I've been at Milligan for two years. So. Very good, very good. <clears throat> yeah, I guess uh, it's, it's, it also is like a typical story from students. You didn't want to study, didn't want to carry on, they just mm. want to live life, enjoy life. Mm. But at some point in time, you thought. Oh, I need to find a job. What shall I do? <laughs> yeah. So that was your moment to say, go and find do something. Yes, yeah, uh, so, yeah. I guess there is that job aspect as well. It's just working each summer between mm-hmm. studies and stuff to kind of have the money coming in. So mm-hmm. I know a lot of people that did work during their studies um, as well. But I found it easier. Which I was really fortunate to have um, good um, accommodation over the summers and I just worked really hard, save mm-hmm. every cent I had. So when it came to the year of study, I would just like be really careful with my money and then um, do that the next summer. So studying during the year, work during the summer and just do that so full time. So Very good. Yeah. Uh, one of the questions I was going to ask whether you got a scholarship. Did you get any scholarship for you? Yes. Oh, oh. Yes, I saw the question. Um, so I got a, a small scholarship for bachelors, which helped with my um, Hall of Residence. And then 
yeah, but I was also getting a student loan. And mm. then for my master's, I was lucky enough to get a scholarship. And then now I'm also on a scholarship, which so it sounds like I've kind of been able to keep my loan low, but I haven't <laughs> because um, you still, I guess the thing that's really hard about a PhD is that you still, even with the scholarships, it's not a ton for living costs as well. So you do kind of have to supplement it with mm. um, student loan payments. So, well, living in Central Wellington, you do, it's really hard to, um, as everything's getting more expensive, the, mm. yeah, scholarships aren't really going up. So I've kind of got both. I've got mm. a student loan and, and scholarships, which mm. have helped immensely. I wouldn't have been able to do a PhD mm. without scholarships. Yeah. Did you not give you a scholarship for... Uh, no, no, I, no, I don't have any kind of scholarship. So, um, there were a few that I should have appro- applied for. Yes. Um, and I, in hindsight, you know, looking back is, you know, you miss every shot mm. you don't take. So I, mm. I definitely, there were ones that I sat down and I was like, oh, I don't think I would get, but I should have just put in my application anyway. So I didn't actually get any scholarships mm. through study. I did it all through the loan. So, right. yeah. Well, uh, let me talk a little bit about that because you mentioned that you were doing this hookworm thing and then I mentioned what, you know, the discussion that we had here. Ole sunga ya tama tekawa. Ole tala no lo ni fosu ifuanga onga yitai mele i fifi ya onga. Ye to tele olm fa na ufa pena fu. Na umala ya onga lkuli. Si na lula iya fa inga lwenga multao sanga. Vava ile po la. Lalme town of five molona yefo yanga iluma, lumina, ya on our willola ya omul colisi, a very biology or the university. My file or more so so in a yefa town at Wingale Wayer Timine, or Yenatal Sanga Singa at Wingale Malacan Institute of Medical Research. I tell you more more. Yeah, I tell you, first of all, I told on a CV, Moelana, Manolena, Lufanga Wingani. Anga luela le vanga le fayele huko mle na tala no toy le nu fe matau ole fay mat fata non ta opuna ta to pokalame e time to ta to interview to fa fonga ye mule fa manga tirio o mta fa pia ya pe ole so fo a o ina na yo sa o ngase in perin scholar chilo hat ye my lima sani le ton le in le mo did you have any dabble in the rugby at all, by the way? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I guess for year nine and year ten I did, yeah. Right. Um, I was actually a front row, <laughs> so yeah, and I actually shot up at that point, but I um, uh, I did my neck, because yeah. yeah, I was in there, so, and that kind of had me out of the game, so mm. um, it was just never the same after that. It's a hard game. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you for that. That's very good. So, looking ahead now, especially for you, you're doing your PhD. Obviously, you're now beginning to see where you're heading. What do you you think you'll be doing this five, ten years? Um, (laughs) That's, yeah, so I am now having to think, as I'm kind of coming to the end of my study, I'm now having to really seriously think about what I want to do. And I definitely... I'm still, as I said before, really loving research. So Mm. I want to stay in research. um, And that generally involves, after you finish your PhD, doing what's called a postdoc, which is basically um, just the the title for someone that is a researcher with a PhD. And you get to kind of solely focus on a project of your own, which I love doing that. Like I love having my own little kind of Mm. thing that I'm carrying through the different stages of research. So I'm really excited to to do that. And I'm going to stay in CAR T cell research because I've I've really enjoyed Mm. it. So for now, I'm going to, yeah, continue on with research, do a few years as a postdoc and then kind of see where it takes me. I love, would love to think at the stage that I could eventually lead a lab one day um Mm. if it kind of yeah there's i guess a long journey to get there but if that would be my ideal outcome Mm. if i could yeah whatever you do don't go and work for another country 
<laughs> Isn't that what we do? We lose a lot know, of our bright it. people overseas. Yeah, <laughs> but in another way, it's good because you actually accumulate knowledge and while you do research for other, and then come back here. Exactly. That's yeah. actually, um, yeah, so in science generally, it's like really encouraged for you to go once you finish sure. your PhD to go yeah, as you say, yeah. acquire skills and knowledge yes. and because science is so global and so um, collaborative yes. that yes. it's really good to go and then come back. <laughs> so <laughs> that would probably be my plan would be to go overseas yeah. for maybe three three or four years and then mm. bring what I've learned back. I'd love to end up back in, in New Zealand and Wellington. Mm. And, yeah. When I interview uh, Professor Graham, mm. apparently the other part of the uh, team that you collaborate with is in Cairns in Australia. That's right. Yeah. And I said, I think we should go there and do a program and have a look and see what they're doing there. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think you should. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, it's, it's funny you mentioned that. We we were there a few months back. Oh. Uh, so, yeah, we just did like a lab visit and a few meetings and stuff. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So you've been there. It was good to meet the team. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, good on you. So see what happens in job opportunities. You get to see the yeah. other part of the world. Yeah, you do. Uh, you get to see the world and you get to meet new people and make new connections. So, mm. yeah, it's good. All right, we're going to play a piece of music here and then we'll have to introduce our next uh, guest. Uh, but thank you very much for sharing that. You're yeah, welcome. Thank you. Thank you yeah. very All much. All right. So, I'm going to talk to you about the next Tolo mo mo yasmina nori ya matama te kawa ili tano anga vanga mo mo la ufoi ngasolonga isufwa wina yo omal temini le wanga le lo le American Institute of Medical Research ya le wo omaya Sam Old stasi fo la tolo anga lo fa tasi ili American temini itala no fo la ne ya fo i isufwa wina yo omal temi o filfidia o ya fenga lwenga i tono le anga lwenga le ne Talofa, welcome to Samo Capital Radio, Sam. Talofa. Good to have you here Talofa. with us this morning to join your colleagues who just had a chat with. Yep. Uh, Talofa, Samoa Capital Radio listeners, and hello to any colleagues who may be listening in. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Okay. Sam, perhaps uh, well, you, you heard the, the discussion now. Uh, um, you might want to share with our listeners uh, your journey through education yep. and how you... Well, what time point in time did you decide to do what you're doing now? Yeah, um, so I grew up here in Wellington and I went to Wellington College. Um, I studied a lot of science there. I did the physics, chemistry, biology track mm. and I was really always very interested in it. Um, but biology in particular captured me. Um, the more you learned about it, the more you realized what you just learned was wrong. <laughs> it's much more detailed, in much what more way? complicated. When you, when you say wrong, in what way? Well, when you study your uh, Punnett squares in biology, genetics seems very simple. Uh, you, <laughs> you have someone with black hair and red hair, and then, but somehow it ends up with brown hair. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Uh, so yeah, once you get really into genetics and how hereditary systems work in biology and how the world evolves. It's so complicated. And mm. yeah, I got really sucked into it and wanted to know more. So um, after high school, I, even though I wasn't very good at biology, I just kept studying it. Oh. Um, just really wanted to learn more and more about it. Um, I kind of focused largely on biology through secondary, through university. And then I had heaps of friends also doing a computer science um, track for to become, you know, uh, developers for certain uh, large paying <laughs> career Good tracks. Good paying jobs, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I kind of followed in their footsteps and did a little bit of biology, a little bit of computer science. Mm. And I ended up with a degree called bioinformatics. Um, bioinformatics. So it's kind of the combination of um, working with large data sets okay. um, in biology. So, for example, working on DNA sequencing and, um, yeah, just how the human genome patches together to mm. figure out what genes do what. Yeah, it's really mm. interesting to me. Yeah, Very different from the biblical uh, <laughs> point of view. Uh. Mm. 
Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> <laughs> really trying to figure out what happens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, that's interesting. You didn't quite like a biology, but you persevered, and now you yeah. really ended up loving it. Yeah, yeah, really interested in it. Constantly wondering. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's very interesting to be on the cutting edge of biological research. Um, things mm. you think are rock solid, concrete truths uh, sometimes mm. um, turn around <laughs> when a bit more evidence comes to. So the you went trouble. to which college did you go to? Yes, I went to Wellington College. Of course, yeah. And then you went to Vic. I went to Otago did University. To Otago. Did you get a scholarship? I did not get a scholarship for Otago University, but I mm. had one when I studied in Melbourne because that would have been prohibitively expensive right. otherwise. So you finished uh, Otago and you came and you continued studying? Or? I, um, after Otago, I had my bachelor's in genetics and I applied to a few jobs and I eventually ended up with a studentship at the Maligan Institute. Oh, okay. um, and then I was there for about nine months. So I ended up having a job for six months of that at the Maligan Institute. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I had a talk with my uh, principal investigator and she told me, you need to get a formal education uh, or a master's if you want to pursue this track of science. And so yeah, I, just, right. I did that afterwards. And then I was, I was asking around for references once I'd finished my master's and they just said, come work for us instead. <laughs> good, good, good. And so I've been at the Maligan ever since. So you made the right call. Yes, I think so. <laughs> and how did you get to Melbourne University? So to get to Melbourne University, I during my time at Maligan, I got my name on one publication. Right. And that it could be used um, as uh, experience to get into my master's. It's combined with my undergrad, my relevant mm. undergrad I've done. Yeah. Right. And you were there for how long? I was there for two years. Right. And that's where you did your... Did my master's in biomedics. So I became a much more specialised uh, scientist at that point. Um, I was very generalist mm. from my Otago University. And then now I work in a very specific field. Now, tell the listeners about what you're doing now. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so my job is largely um, a desk job. So I work on a computer most days and I work on other people's data that is collected from the lab. Okay. Um, so a lot of it is uh, either from a flow cytometer, which is um, just analyzes light off certain cells to see which markers are there, but it can be um, lots of different data sets that I can work on. Um, something I work on especially now is called single cell RNA-seq data. And that's a recent advancement in science. We're able to purify and freeze down individual cells. And then we kind of tear them apart and we see every single gene that's being expressed in that cell. That's really, really critical for um, asthma and allergy, the work that we're working on right now in order to understand what the very first cells in our body that respond to an allergen are doing. So it's, it's mm. quite tough work, super cutting edge, um, and a lot of challenges. Um, it's a full-time job just working on a single data set. It can be months. Mm. Of, I've had a data set go for over a year now. So. so is there an outcome that you can see when you start looking at some data? Yeah, so we try and capture a few thousand single cells at once and then I can kind of put very similar ones next to each other and kind of graphs or whatever we want to look at mm -hmm. um, and we can try and understand the whole process of a cell developing first turning from a stem cell into an asthma cell into it responded to an allergen into it reported to the body so you get this really cool picture of exactly what happens in a single cell as it grows up and does its mm. whole job. It's really so do you get a uh, sample from um, asthmatic people, people suffering? Um, I have currently been working on a data set from people with psoriasis and atopic dermatitis. So mm. we're really interested in skin allergies um, yes. for humans at the moment. Um, I have worked on allergic mice data 
so they have had lung pathogens um, mm. and yeah yeah there's lots of different data sets of so what outcome are you or the team that you're working on mm -hmm. collectively are you trying to achieve here we are trying to understand fate mapping of cells um, we're trying to see what genes need to be expressed in order for a cell to become an allergy cell we want to see um, and prove this is how allergies happen because it, believe it or not it's actually still not fully understood mm. what the very first cells are some, doing. Some people are very prone to these things, you know, yes. pollen and, that, and they, they, they get it easily enough. But others are well, perhaps the immune, uh, immune system of the body uh, sort of help those who are well equipped and those who are not. Yeah, well, it could be genetic differences. Okay. It yes. could be systemic um, disease causes inflammation and causes the body to respond differently. It could be something mm. within them, a pathogen that causes an mm. ulterior effect. It's hard to say, yeah, mm. it's different per person. Now, pressure, do they give you like, we want you to come up with this in two weeks or two months? How how's the workload for you young scientists now? Um, <laughs> yeah, pressure, I do get, People will start a serious project with me and they may not expect an outcome for six months. Mm. I might get people who want what seems like a very small answer, very quick answer. Uh, I can't give that to them for a month. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's interesting. There's, there's little things I work on which can take a year. There's a project I've worked on which has taken me two years to finish. And then I can use everything I've learned in that two years to finish another project in a week. Right. Um, it's so it compensates. Uh, yeah, yeah, mm, definitely. Complements other work. Yeah, so now that um, I've done a lot of work in single cell and bulk RNA sequencing, if someone does it again, I'm going to be much faster, much mm. more efficient. Um, it's kind of, that's what my job is. I create automatic pipelines to analyze data very complex data and I have to understand all these little processes and I have to be able to communicate it well and I have to you know, interact with scientists to see if the answer I'm giving even makes sense. Mm. <laughs> so do you have somebody working with you along you know, the same research or process? Yes, um, so I have uh, Dr. David Eccles, um, mm. he's a huge help to me. Um, make sure I'm doing <laughs> all my science well and all my, <laughs> all my code makes sense helps me out with any mm. big hiccups I have. And then I also have um, my team leader, Olivia Lemuel. Um He's very knowledgeable on this field. And uh, even though he doesn't exactly know how to use the code I, I work mm. with, he, he knows that the outcome I'm um, getting makes sense mm. and helps me to try new things and give ideas and how it supports me, yeah. So um, have you been tempted by other people to come and work overseas or? Um, I am very tempted to work overseas, but mm. I'm so happy here. Um, mm. I grew up about a hundred meters away from Melligan oh, Institute. Okay. So yeah, when I found well, out why I was leave, there. Why leave home when everything is good? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> why leave home when everything is yeah, good? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's very <laughs> kind of, I've got everything I want here. Oh, <laughs> But yeah, I think it is important to um, consider going overseas for this type of field because um, it, it's it's a very new field I work in. Um, kind of big, gotten really big in the last ten years, mm. and even with me being educated three four years ago, I might be missing a lot. <laughs> mm. I don't know. It would be good to have more collaborators overseas or work more with people overseas mm. to improve myself and bring more to the Institute. Yeah. Yeah. So where do you see yourself five, 10 years? Um, I, th I think I might still be at the Melligan Institute. Um, mm. I've seen a lot of, well, I've seen a couple of senior positions for mm. bioinformatics, uh, go by there. And I think I would like to fill that one day when I have more experience. Mm. Um, yeah, at the moment I'm really trying to focus on progressing my research. Um, progressing other people's research you know I have uh, I work with about 20 different scientists right. just doing small things some big things 
um, just really want to make sure all the publications we make are of good quality mm. and then maybe I can lead one of my own one day mm. <laughs> and yeah take on a senior position here. Is there any project where you um, had a request from another uh, research body overseas for help? Um, in the field you're in? Not formally, but um, yeah, my cohort from the Melbourne University, yeah, I've had um, people mm. ask me about how I'm going and what I'm working on. Um, at, um, when I've been to conferences in Sydney, yes, I've had um, people ask me how they, mm. how I worked on something. Um, right. And I've had people ask me to collaborati collaboratively help them with some certain things of apps, but not... Um, major projects yet mm -hmm. but I really hope yeah that does happen soon <laughs> very good well you've just lost me a few things you say it was all over the past my yes yeah, sorry <laughs> <laughs> Try to keep it. but I'm glad it's all there so we can go back and listen and then <laughs> do a bit of a uh, translation only I'll just have to say a little bit about this now only sooner yes I'm old a bit more my Oyesa Alul University in Otago, in Alula, in Melbourne, Fayela, Yolana Masters. In Ale, Fayeye, to Ingang Alwenga, your genetics, Malay computer science. Ole Nalwenga Tele on a no form of a singer for Mongong Tele, is a semi so so angle of fire. A loose full so so angle of fire, Malacan issue to all on a left so on a year for a singer of a Mongonga. Ma me mo wo ma ye su su enga ya yo na fa fa senga la ye ma ta fa su su sa pe fa fe nga i e mo wo itali o lo muna o mi ena to fa ingo su su enga ye o isi tami le fa pe lan tala e u mi a na fa su su enga to a mo se se fo se se to se tali o se tonu le me o lo ta su su e ya fa inga na su su enga lo fa ya mo nga lo enga i o lo fa ya ne fo dinga ma ye a tele ya isi scientist yo fano lango ya ye imo famo mongo name so so engani ya mai all over i for ye ile lima se full to sanga lumunai i told no ye no fama fanga lunga american bio ile ma sane ile ma tele molona ainga is a tonu le long one sam thank you very much for sharing that with our listeners this morning i think uh, Everybody's still thinking now, they're probably saying, how the, how would I ever get there? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're going to yeah. school, college, uh, you know, obviously you enjoy science, you have genetics and your physics, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, and chemistry. Yep. And then, uh, but even then at that point, you weren't sure what are you going to do with all that? <laughs> and you're now pushing, pursuing biology. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, for me, I guess I had to get into computer science to get my mm -hmm. job. Yes. Um, and for me, it didn't really happen through my interest. Um, oh, God. I, I loved online gaming and I loved um, uh -oh. being on the computer constantly. <laughs> so <laughs> my friends, my family always go, you know, make jokes. Oh, you know, you get into computer science, eh? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then all my friends did get up, <clears throat> end up getting into it. And um, yeah, keeping up with my friends and... Um, mm working with them at university um, that kind of really got me into how I worked here um, how I ended up here but um, the thing that got me into the Maligan Institute was um, just contacting the comms team one day and saying I, I, I had had a summer where I just worked for my dad and my uncle just like digging trenches moving trees building mm -hmm. fences and I've been applying to genetics jobs throughout New Zealand the whole year and got nowhere. So I just kind of found out there's this world-class immunolo immunological mm, centre yes. 100 metres from my house. <laughs> 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 so I said and, to, <laughs> and you were looking all over the country. <laughs> yeah. And you got one right next to you. Yeah. So I sent an email saying, I'm interested in bioinformatics. And um, I sat down with an interview with, um, David Eccles and mm. another bioinformatician we had there at the time and um, they offered me a little studentship and I just worked mm. hard to prove myself right. Right. yeah that's kind of how I got into it I just I, I tried to keep my subjects at university very broad mm. um, and then just ended up 
the thing that got me in was just contacting someone, yeah. <laughs> sending an email. Brilliant. <laughs> Very good. You know, when you're doing computer science, uh, for those people listening, yes. what attracted you to computer science? Um, I guess the thing that really got me attracted to it was uh, in high school, uh, we did a simple paper where a simple subject where it was web development. We had to make mm. a website yeah. um, through HTML and CSS. And I really liked it. It was mm. really fun. Um, you know, you write code, you press refresh, the page mm. changes. <laughs> you get a picture come up, it goes blue or something. It was yeah. just really satisfying. And then I just did one single paper at university, Java 101. Mm. And um, yeah, it was, it was interesting how simple computer science could be. Um, you write a program and it just can do math for you. Or can, so are you doing that to help with the research work you do? Yes. Um, Quite a bit of coding in that? Yeah, I do a huge amount of coding. Um, there's so much work for bioinformaticians to do just to speed up random mm. things in science. Um, I'm sure like all over the world probably has that issue. Things need to be automated. Things mm. need I've to got be, a few things here yeah, when I automate it, I'm trying to yeah, get my head around it. Exactly. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, once, when you're good at being a general programmer, you can help a lot of people with a lot of things mm. and it just turns out that science really needs computer science it needs statistics it needs mathematicians mm. um, and it's just it, it's all I'm there to do I'm just to help out mm. and make sure that people Very are good. using stats right using the correct programs mm. yeah just technical help really but so all the artificial intelligence yes yes a bit of that yeah yeah we do try try and do a lot of machine learning i need to up my game there yeah. it's really exploded so um you know in our specific community when somebody's i waste a lot of time on computer or devices yeah they said go and read the book and do yeah. studies and i thought they are actually studying <laughs> by playing around with those things they do games now, if you look at all the drones now, yeah. you need people who are good at playing games to drive those things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that true. how you see it? <laughs> well, yeah, it can be a good distraction. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I guess the stereotype of being the guy on the computer helped me get into it. <laughs> if I, I, if I've got to spend so much time on a computer, I might as well be good at it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, well done. I think uh, you're good find for them. Um, I'm glad that you ended up working for Melican because... The sound of what you're doing, you can actually help with a lot of the work that they're doing. But yeah, definitely. Trying to simplify all this mass data in front of them <laughs> by doing something you can actually interpret and analyze it. Yeah, it's a big challenge. Um, mm. I'm very happy to be there and help out. It's, it's the most fun part of my job, I think, is just helping people. Mm. They always, always seem very appreciative. Very good. Well, uh, thank you. Um, uh, I'm sorry, let me have a look. Tama? Uh, Yasmin, Yasmin is out of the camera now, sorry, she's uh, sitting on the side here listening to this uh, interview. Um, and we also, by the way, yeah, we've got Gail Marshall, she's the comms manager at Malican Institute. She always comes with uh, guests from Malican, she's with us this morning. And Samo, thank you for sharing that with us. Hopefully some of our listeners, especially the students, would, would be heartened by what they're hearing. Some of them are still a little lost or what to do when they finish. Mm, for sure. But listening to you and what your stories are will actually help them. Yeah. Uh, keep prodding along and then you'll, something will come your way and yeah, and then uh, try and contact people next to you. Don't go all over the, room, the world <laughs> <laughs> looking for a job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> comments, final comments from you two while you're here. Um, oh, thank you very much for having us. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't be too scared of being in science um, yeah. just try and keep your keep yourself broad and um, mm. don't be afraid to ask people for help mm. or recommendations I think I've had a, a couple of people reach out to me before and have really liked answering those um, mm. type of emails yeah mm. thank you yeah I would say um, for the students you know that are coming towards the end of their third, uh, year 13 um don't be afraid, I think is the, mm. the main thing. Um, you know, it will work out, you know, you will find something and mm. um, whether you choose to move into science, you know, um, the world is your oyster, go, go hard. Um, <laughs> and all it takes is, you know, an email, just reach out, you know, uh, there's nothing wrong with being declined or, you know, um, 
you know, eventually, you know, you get picked up. So mm. all it takes is just reaching out. Thank you, Tama. Thank you. Uh, now, I, I'm going to ask you, please, if you wouldn't mind uh, vacating that seat. We'll have to welcome uh, Yasmin uh, back here so she can <laughs> say, say the final comments before we wrap this up. Thank you. <coughs> well, you heard all that. <laughs> yeah. Final comments from you, um, I think it kind of goes against what Sam was saying about <laughs> um, his feelings with biology, but I think for me... Like, science can be hard, but as long as you enjoy it and it's as long as you're following it because you're interested in it and you are passionate about it, I think that's kind of all that matters at the end of the day for doing for doing it. I think, yeah, you can get through, even though it might seem tough from the outside, if you're really interested mm. in what you're doing, I think you just can kind of easily mm. make a career out of it. And you're from up... Uh, Above Auckland? Yeah, Whangaroa uh, Peninsula. And you enjoy living in Wellington now? You're going yes. to stay here? Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. I love <laughs> No, no, thank you. Thank you for the three of you to come and share that this morning with our listeners. Let's hope we'll actually um, motivate some of them to take on science <laughs> and uh, satisfy Graham's request of me. He wants uh, to see some Pacific scientists working for Malikan in the future. Yeah, it'll be good to see them. Yeah. So good luck. All the best for the work you're doing in. And I'll be interested to find out some of the outcomes of the research work that you're involved in. And I'll be very interested to talk to you about your coding skills. Yeah. <laughs> 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 inga lwenga pyo no yila to ile malekan institute yet mo fosisha no to tertano altemini fatofa soifua